Welcome to MotoGP Mac, where MotoGP fans come to congregate and fanboys fear to tread. Wow, guys, we had a hell of a race this weekend. We sure did, man. We sure it did. It's a great yeah. race. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was I suppose we kind of catch up the sprint. Mm-hmm. Boy, oh boy, did we get a surprise. And <laughs> yeah, you know, I, like that famous saying, like the only one that could have been Mar- Martin this weekend was himself. And yep. he yep. he did give himself a knockout punch to uh on the Saturday, do you know what I mean? Um easily mm-hmm. happened, like but like I was listening to the commentators and they're like Last thing you do in this race in the first three or four laps is push in turn 16. Do not yeah. fucking push. Lap one, bang. <laughs> you're so, <laughs> really, you're just like, for fuck's sake, lad. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, look, I thought, I thought Pecco's comment was actually right. And although Martin did get a little bit pissy about it, and he's like, this championship is all about a championship of mistakes. Who is going to make the biggest fuck up? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or who? And it is right because like they both crashed so many times while in such a good good position, you know. Um, right. and Martin was like, "Oh, you know, you know, he should maybe focus on himself." There was a uh, there was a slight comment back to Peck about Pecco, but I was just like, "Yeah." And you know, like going to bed last night, I was I was kind of still in it, in the thing that Mark was in this championship and Bastanini. But uh, t- today's race, I think, has taken care of that for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t- today's race again, it was really it was. While it wasn't the most exciting race to watch, right? It was work, a pretty exciting race. Though. You were. You were kind of on. You were kind of on the edge of your seat because you knew someone was going to throw it up the road. Do you know what I mean? You just knew something was going to happen. You know, like turn one or turn two, Miller. You know, bowling ball Miller. You know, and I say that with with a pun, right? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because he was the ball, and the rest of them were the skittles that fell down. Do you know, Th- these things do happen. Um. But I thought Martin was just fucking excellent today. Like, I thought he was. And where I thought he was actually brilliant was, was that when he had to re-engage the speed. Do you know what I mean? He kind of tailored a bit off. He made a mistake. And he had to put the hammer down again. And if anyone knows, it's very, very hard to re-engage the speed or to put the hammer down again. Once you've got into a cruising mode and you're, you've backed off those few tens, to go again is hard, but it's also dangerous in the way that you're going to crash. And I just thought he managed that gap. You have to find that edge again, which is the yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, you know, I think he was just brilliant. Like, you know, he... He did a damage limitation on yesterday. Do you know what I mean? Pecco, I think Pecco closed in, what, three points in them over the weekend. Yeah. But, you know, it was damage limitation after the mess up yesterday. For me, I think really one of the, like, Martin was outstanding but unchallenged. Do you know what I mean? Um, and he has, and I, I, like, he has the best bike under him. He was in a flow. He was in a good track. Like for me, one one of the real riders of the day was Acosta, right? Because he doesn't have the fucking bike under. Him. Bike under him, right. <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? Like he overrode that. Saying that, you know, this track to Acosta is like Aragon or Phillip Island or Saxon Ring to Mark Marquez. He just gels with that circuit and goes well there, right? So I'm not over like this this is an acosta circuit where he's he goes well on naturally do you know what i mean mm-hmm. but saying that compared to his other teammates he put that ktm gas gas into a place where it shouldn't have been in my right. yeah yeah but you, you know, know what's martin, was martin can't you see the handwriting starting to appear on the wall not only, not even when he wasn't winning, he seems to have the speed. 
He's starting to creep. His speed starting to appear greater than than Bagnaya's. So what, one of the first things that I noticed, one of the first things that I did notice, that, and I noticed it in Mizano, is that the drive has kind of switched around in drive off the corners, and it looks like Martin is getting off those corners faster than Peko. Peko did say bring a note into it about it, but where Peko's major problem is, as and let's be very, very fair and honest, is I think he wouldn't have had the total pace to stay with with Martin, but I think he would have troubled him in the first few laps and r- sent a rush of blood to Martin's head in the first few laps if he was in second place. But the start again, fucking, he duffed the start again. I don't know, did you see it? Like he, yeah. he popped yeah, the front he? wheel a couple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's his most serious concern right now is that he knows Martin is fast and he, Peko is just as fast as Martin. Mm-hmm. Oh, on overall, not in individual circuits. Do you know what I mean? Overall, yeah. he, he is just as fat. He just has he has a a same raw speed thing about him. But mm-hmm. it I seems think, to be who on the day who is faster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you see, Peck, like in my view, Peko has duffed a couple of starts now. That's put him behind Martin, and that's it. Game over. You know, we saw it in Mizano one. You You're know. So gross. You know what I mean? They're, so they're fair. They're, in my view, they're fairly evenly matched, which which is a great thing for us, lads. You know, it's it's it, it it means that it's it's a good fight. Um, but I thought Peko today. I thought he he rode really really well because he knew he didn't have it, but he knew he had to stay in contention. And that lads, that's it's an awful fucking place to be. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like he still he had to he he had to take. Probably more risk than Martin did. Yeah, after the sprint race, he said, "I don't. I'm, I'm not doing well. I'm not. I mean, it's just bad when you win a race and you go, I'm not doing well." And I was like, "Shit, he, that's so." That's- I, I I I said it in my recap on Friday, and I had to watch it on a small screen this weekend because I was um I was away, um, but I was I was watching on Friday. And I could see he just didn't have the pace. And someone came in and said, oh, he was working on his race pace and whatever. And when I say someone doesn't have the, have the pace, I'm not looking at the last two laps that they do on Friday fucking practice, lads. Yeah. You know, I have right. live timing open. I watch his, I watch their, especially the title runners, I watch their their lap times. And then I'm like, okay, this person does have the pace. I'm not just saying really fucking nilly like do you know what I mean and when, and so I would look at her his race pace and I would look at his pace on a Friday and be like okay one has the pace one doesn't do you know what I mean yeah. and so like you kind of get it you get that vibe now what we're used to seeing with Peko though is that you know he suffers on Saturday and he comes on comes out stronger on, on Friday and I think what's happened this year I don't know. I I have a feeling this year that Pramac are not as naive as they were last year. Do you know what I mean? Yes, they can see they can see each other's data, but I don't think that the data fixes that the Pramac team are tuning in is going back to the last minute. Do you know what I mean? So so let's just say Martin might be faster, but they might have found something as well that within the setting. Or trying something and it might feel better, but it mightn't show on the data. It, do you get me? I think there's a little bit of gamesmanship now creeping into the teams, both teams, not just. Mm-hmm. But like if the two of them are going for the championship, they're sharing data after the fact. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, um, well, that's a smart move. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's what's now starting to happen big time. And I think I think they've found something. Um I think Pramac have found something and that's helping Martin get off the corner that little bit faster. Um, Peko did, like, look, Peko's race, I think he did a really, really good race. Uh, like, it wasn't spectacular, but to watch. But if you know the predicament, as I said, that he is in, he has to take risks, but he can't afford a mistake. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's not like. That's like getting you know, don't get a hard on in the fucking confession box, lads. Do you, know, right. do, 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 do you know what I mean? It's just like, and it's a sexy fucking nun that's in there with you. Do you know what I mean? Or whatever. And you're like, you know, for me, 
I think he I think he did well. I I did get nervous, I must admit, when I saw he he started banging in a few fast laps and it was like, oh fuck it, here we go again. Yeah. Um but uh no, I think look he he I think he also was hoping on the Pedro Acosta tire pressure incident that it would actually that he would get the penalty to get the extra what are there three or four points? Um, get, is there any uh, anything back on that yet? Yeah, so for Pedro Acosta, uh, my understanding is is that um, he will keep the second place. Oh. Um, uh, that it was actually proven that it was an air leak. Um, or a leak in the, the rim. So, wow, um, good, good. That whole I, thing. I, I, I feel like it's politics. I feel like that's just strictly politics. Yeah, right Attack and Nakagami was done for it, but I don't think Binder was done for it either. Um, Everybody else. Yeah. But yeah, look, it's, it, it, it is the most stupidest fucking rule in, well, that and the green line, a uh, green paint and, uh, and the end of a race. But I won't even get fucking started on that because I only start getting the night. Um, it's an overcomplicated rule that doesn't need to be there. That's, that's the viewpoint of it. I 100% agree, though that some rule needs to be in place when it comes to tire pressures, right? And for those, I've seen a few comments about, eh, I'll just leave them fucking race, it's grand, right? It's not like that. It's you, you just can't do that in this form of racing. And the reason you can't do it is because the rider does not set his tire pressures, okay? So if someone else sets your pr tire pressures too low, and you go out and you have an accident where you're, the person is seriously injured, killed, or whatever, and it is found that it's because of something to do with, say, the front tire being either under inflation or over inflation, or or the tire falls apart or whatever. It will go to Michelin. Michelin will say, lads, this tire was run five psi below the minimum that we told you. In a court of law, that's manslaughter. Mm -hmm. end of fucking story right so whoever the team would be done from manslaughter or whatever should someone be done or hurt in that so you have to have a regulation fine this one is just so fucking stupid test the tire like they know they have a sensor that's there right the tire needs to be at 201 p.m in the day or whatever 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 time the race starts is the tire needs to be 1.8 bar in the front and 1.6 bar in the rear. Right. If it's not, gone. Yeah, that makes That's sense it. to me. Just check it. But I say check it in the beginning. You don't at the but end of the race. It, you know. But yeah, but that's what I mean. Like that's what I'm saying. Like the race starts at 2 p.m. Right. Start before the race starts. And check it before the race starts, and that's about the best you can that's do. It. But yes. that's it. But they have like they have a live checking for it. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? It is it, it's a time dated fucking thing with mm -hmm. the lap. So just go like okay, go three seconds past two two o'clock. Do you know what I mean? They're on the grid, whatnot. There you go. That's it. Is it above it? Yes or no? Do you know what I mean? If it's not above it, right through penalty. Do you know what I mean? Done. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, they need to change that. Like, like this, like this thing was a little bit of a, a fucking joke, in my opinion. Like, Acosta crossed the line. You could see Acosta it was like, "Oh fuck, I have a penalty." Do, do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not going to enjoy this podium. Yeah, this thing was all started with a, a reporter with Ducati hate. Remember, saying they were cheating. That's oh yeah, the, uh, but that's the, yeah, that was the time. Yeah, yeah, he said it was Ducati was cheap, but he forgot to leave out the Yamaha and Honda and someone else. <laughs> we're, 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 we're done the week before, the week before, and mm -hmm. it was actually it was yeah. He came out and said that they were cheating, but there was actually no regulation there at the time, so that they couldn't mm -hmm. be cheating. But yeah. what the, what the manufacturer or what the teams allowed dorna to do was to start testing different sensors and programs and all of this to get a, a, a some data so that so that it would work and what the, he took was a print off and used that but then 
he never took the printoffs of previous races and came out and accused Ducati. And that person is still no longer welcome in Ducati. I wouldn't like, he never apologized either. Oh. I get together with him all the time. I said, did you ever, you ever apologize yet? Nothing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. It's, he, he's one of those fellows. Yeah, he, 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 he has so much dirt, so much dirt on other people. Or on everyone in the paddock, he reminds me of a fellow of a, a fellow Dieter Ray Ry, 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 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in. He's in. He's South African guy, but he has so much dirt on for our Formula One team. It's unbelievable. If he ever wrote a book, which I'd say he'll do when he's dead, it'll yeah. come out when he's dead. Do you know what I mean? Um, it would be, it would be, yeah, bad news for Ferrari. But look, I think, I think. Joe, the, the top three today, they deserve, they very much so deserved it. Um, I did, and to be honest, I did think what's his day, but Costa was going to crash right. when he started closing in the gap. I thought he was going to get a little bit excited, so I was very, very impressed to see him. Uh, very impressed to see him do it now. Any of Bastanini and Mark Marquez, I'm still not going to say their championship is over, do you know what I mean? I, 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 I'm gonna say it's hard. Yeah, that's, that's but big, big lightly. But the two boys up front make such fucking idiotic mistakes. Yeah, you just can't count it out. Like you know, you just can't. Like Marquez, big following in Japan, likes Motegi. Okay, it is maybe more of a peco track, you know. But Martin goes well there. I, I'm going to go on the record now, and I think there's going to be a clash between Peko and Martin at some racetrack. Valencia. No, I think it's going to happen before Valencia to turn Valencia. it into in, into bad blood. Like right now, the relationship, which drives me fucking mad, right, is is very mm -hmm. nice and cordial and whatever. Like, I like, I like, man, I fucking hate you, right? And it's fine to be doing it on the track. Do you know what I mean? But like, I fucking hate those things like congratulating and fucking, yeah, you congratulations, you beat me to the fucking five points. You put another prick. <laughs> it it will change when he when he leaves uh, Ducati. It may change. Uh, I I don't know. I don't think so. Um, yeah. I think like there's not. A, there's, you know, all those, by the way, all those guys that said. That look pointed Ducati and were like, oh look, they they got him, you know, because they we we're leaving and, and stomping their feet, right? Um, you know, like Bastianini going to uh to KTM and all. Uh mm -hmm. now they're wishing they stayed with Ducati. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I said. Like I said last week, you know, um like when they were going for the Misano two race win, uh Bastianini and Martin, you know. This is probably their last chances to get race wins <laughs> for a while, you know. And that's not being an asshole. That's just being, if you look at the KTM and look at where the Ducati is this year, it's night and day, you know. KTM have gone backwards. And I'll fight anyone to the death who says, no, actually, they've gone forward. Speaking of KTM, it's something that we knew that was rumored for, for a while, but... Uh, they've confirmed this afternoon or this morning that indeed uh, Francesco Gadotti is going to leave at the end of the season. Hmm. I have a sneaky feeling that he could resurface in Pramac Yamaha. Excellent. I have a feeling like so. Pit Byra said, you know, that they want to go a different direction with lead, someone in leadership after three years. I personally, and I, I have nothing, no source to base this off, but I personally think that Gudati was very pissed off in the way KTM treated Jack. And remember, it was Gudati that brought Jack to KTM. And I was like, when, when, when it happened, when it happened where, because remember, KTM, and I, and, and I can picture Gadotti saying this to Jack, but that 
KTM said to Jack, um, remember, don't look anywhere else. We we have somewhere for you, this, that, and the other. And then they they came out and they signed Bastanini and Maverick and left him out in this fucking hole. And I don't think that sat well with Francesco Gadotti. And so I think there was a bit of an internal thing. And Gadotti was always going to lose that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised um if that does happen. And that he he arrives in Pramac, um, which would be going home for him, really. Remember, as he left, that's where he left. He left Pramac Ducati. Um, so having, and I think Pramac will will probably lose some engineers um, over to the Ducati side th- this season as well, because there are some really good technicians in there um, who might not want to stick around. But anyway, I think f- for that. Um, Mark's issue. He blew up the fucking engine of the bike, like <laughs> he, he blew it up. Oh, I thought I thought it just, you know. Well, you can well, see it, that. Well, well, it doesn't just catch fire without something yeah. fucking blowing, like yeah. you know what I mean. And you could hear Why him not? over. Why not? At this stage in the game, you know, push it. That's like he's telling Yamaha, push it. You, you know, the bike's down. You know, go for the, go for the, go for the, go for the. But that, but that's actually, but that's actually the point. It's like we've seen a couple of Ducati motors blow this year. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So like they're they they are pushing on, and they're not a, like they're not afraid of like the. <laughs> no one is talking about Mark's engine blowing up. They're not. The media is not talking about Mark's engine blowing up. They're more talking about that there was loads of damage done to the bike. Because the fire marshals where he parked up the bike didn't have the right fire no. extinguisher. Yeah. That's what they're actually talking about, rather than like nothing that he fucking nuked the en- what well, sorry, he didn't nuke the engine nuked itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe he overrebbed it, I don't know. But like the engine nuked, right? So the fucking da- the, the damage are, was already extensive, right? Those right. things don't go bang and it's cheap, like right? right you know I mean? It's not a, it's not just a hose, uh, yeah. a hose or what? Uh, like you know what I mean? Like those things are so stressed and so lean on our internals that yeah, any it's, bang it's gonna is gonna happen. Like, uh, it's gonna happen. So yeah, they gotta heat uh, the engine before you turn it over. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, that's that's normal with with all high performance engines. You know what I mean? That they're mm-hmm. they're uh, the the tolerances are that tight. Um, I was just about to say that the tolerances of the engine is or they're tight. Is really tight. So yeah, it, well, like it's it, when it's cold, it's seized. Do you know what I mean? That's the mm-hmm. and that's like that's pretty standard in, in, in you know even with Formula One and that. Um, but yeah, I just I just looking at it, I was just I was I was gutted from because he was hanging now. Let's be fair. He was just hanging on to Peko. Do you know what I mean? Like he did. He didn't have. He didn't have anything for Peko. But fuck me, man, Bastanini. Like if Bastanini could nail the first five laps, he'd be world champion already multiple times. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like from lap five or six or seven on, he started pushing on, and you knew you could you could see him behind the boys, and I know. I know um, Bisecki and, and Morbidelli, they had soft tires on, right? But like when he turned in, like he had, like the bike wasn't rolling or it wasn't pushing forward. You know what I mean? You could just see that he was able to run the lines that he wanted to run, but he just didn't have the pace with the full tag, which is a Bastadini problem. Now, saying that, because he protects those the tires so much in those first five or six laps, is that what gives him the late race pace later on that he doesn't abuse the tires so early? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so there's a lot of things there, but I kind of felt he says bit... he stands the tire up real quick when he comes out of a corner. He stands the bike up real quick. He gets it. He the does, but he does it. Look, that's great for the rear. Do you know what I mean? But it's not for the front then because you're putting extra energy through the front. But his front seems to last. Do you know what I mean? Um, so like, uh, I think I, I, just, I just don't know what he, I'd love to see him n- n- nail those ones. I was very impressed with Maseki as well. He definitely has seemed to have found something in that GP23. Um, he's now seeming to get on, get on with it, which is a bit late. Do you it's know what I mean? Late, yeah. You know, late. um, 
But again, and it was funny actually to see Digi Antonio and Mark Marquez go hammer and tongs at each other. They they do not like each other, so you're no. you're they don't know. So no. so it's good to see them giving each other a bit of a bit of grief out in the track. But it was done done in a in a good, respectful. Yeah, it's professional. Yeah, like it was. It wasn't. It wasn't dirty. It wasn't dirty, but it was hard. Like do you know what I mean? And um, you know, there was no one kicking out or or, or punching or 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 whatnot. So no kicking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kicking. Um, oh man, what else was there? I was really surprised with the Aprilias. It was just, I know, I know Miguel has a fractured wrist. Um. But I was just surprised that they. Um, I was just kind of surprised, I suppose, with um, with their overall pace. You yeah. know, I know, and I know, I know, Elish went out, but like he still mm. didn't even have. Um, he still didn't even have the the raw speed in it, you know. Um. um Seems like they're um sorry, what? It seems reading. like they're mid they're mid um like Aprilia and KTM are just mid they're just they can't get out of the middle, you know. They can't right. get to the, to the front. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it seems as if they were if they were stuck in it. Um but but uh but uh Zarco Man, Zarco, he's uh he's creeping up there. Yeah, well, look, first thing that's all for, driver, though, man. That, that's all right. He's busting his oh, yeah. oh, yeah. them. You know, like so no bend for leather. My 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 two cents on, on this. So firstly, we have Fabio, right? Again, putting the Yamaha into positions where the Yamaha shouldn't be, right? And he, again, he rode a really, really good race. When I look at uh, Zerko, though, um, it's a different kettle of fish, right? Um, and what I've, what I've looked at with Zerko is Zerko is starting to get consistency within the bike. And you can see something has changed for him, Joe. You know? um, and I was looking, I was actually looking at his pace and his pace looked... Uh, well, as on the plane, I, I was looking at just some of the, the lads' um race pace from today, and it was just it was it, it was mighty impressive in the in the in the lap charts. But like Quadrero was down in 13th place, right? And I would love to say for the likes of Zarco and that that it is a it was um. It was a great result, but I can't really say that it was a great result, right? Because twelve bikes out of nineteen finished. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I would love because if if four or five more bikes had finished and they finished in that spot, I'd be like, right, well, then fucking there you go, beauty. Even into the top ten, I would it be like, shine off. You know, let's put it that way. When you look it at it. Does, Ah, you know, it, yeah, it just takes the 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 realistic, uh, um, uh, so, um, yeah, so it's uh, now now with Quadraro, you can see he's so down on power, you can see him trying to make up, do that one ten percent, one hundred ten percent in the corners. You can see him wiggle and wobbling, and you know. Trying for dear life to get through that makeup time. Yeah, so, someone said the bike has too much grip, and I'm thinking, um, too much grip. You talking yeah, about that, that, uh, that threw me. That threw me. I don't know yeah, if that was. Somebody, somebody, uh, I'm sure they weren't making a joke about back nine once because what's mm -hmm. that? Two years ago, if he said the bike had too much oh, grip. Yeah, yeah. No, it was too stable. It's too stable. Yeah, the front end. Um, he mentioned that in quote. Huh? Remember his his quote. Yeah, right? it was one of the races. I forget. Yeah. yeah. Too, yeah. Too, now, too, look, too, much too much grip. Yeah, him. but like saying it, like Johan Zerko was in the top ten of fastest laps out of seventeen riders during today's race in uh -huh. fastest laps. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? 
and he did that uh, in lap 17. So he wasn't, it wasn't that like at the start of the race, he did a fast lap. Do you know what I mean? It was like 17 laps in and like he did 10. He, he was what, eight tenths of a second off uh, matching Maverick Vinales. Do you know what I mean? The fastest lap during. So for me, when I'm looking at it, it was kind of, um, it's not a bad race for him, but like, I suppose where he can take the, where he can take solace from this, right, is that he had Fabio Quadraro, uh was only on race pace now, was only two seconds ahead of him. Which is, is fuck all. Do you know what I mean? After uh, a lap there, he was battling with Brad Binder, who was three tenths of a second ahead of him. Um, and Raul Fernandez was six tenths. So, like, he was like, if we put back in, just say, for, for example, if we put back in any Bastanini, Mark Marquez, and Fabio Di Antonio, he still would have been in top 10 uh, pace. Do you know what I mean? And I take good solace out of that, but it, it's not a seventh. Do, do you know what I mean? It, 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 it's not, it, it's, it's good, and I get it, but his race pace was top 10. Which is great, Joe. You know I mean, it is really, really good to see. But that's, as you said, Jake, that is all Zarco. That is not. That's not fucking Marini or fucking anyone. No. Marini's fastest lap, but well, he didn't do one because he was done. And uh, Joe and Mir did twelve laps, right? And this is kind of an ex example of it. Uh, Joe and Mir is six tenths of a second slower on his fastest lap than. Um, then Zerko. Takanakagami is five tenths of a second. Alex he, Rin Alex he's, Rins. He's a young guy throwing throwing those uh kamikaze laps down. You know, not not Zarko. It yeah. is a, you know? Alex Alex Rins is like eight tenths of a second off Fabio. So there's like there there is there is a huge um difference there i suppose and it's just one of the things that that i was looking at in this race especially was like like we've been we've been given out to for a hating on hondas right and we'll always say when they do a good result we'll we'll say it like and today was a good result for them yep and mm -hmm. progress is is coming for zarko do you know what i mean like he is a top 10 bike which they weren't they were 13 14 um but still it's it's still way behind running with Ducati's Joe you know we did like if we look at the class classification um you still long, rather see in my opinion you still rather see a regular rider doing well yeah. than, a, than a Fabio because this way you know it's real you know the progress is real if you have uh so Zarko yeah Zarko was 15 seconds behind um behind uh, Jorge Martin today, right? And um, Takanakagami was 27 seconds. So look, we, we'll call it 12 seconds behind Taka was his, or behind Zarko was the next Honda. Do you know what I mean? So like, there, is, there, is, there is a big difference within those riders still. And like, let's be fair, Johan Zarko is not the fastest race rider out there. He won a race once. You know, that's fair enough, and I take that on board. But he's not known to be consistently fast. He's top five, mm -hmm. but he's not into consistently. He was never into consistently yeah. top three. Just, just being fair, right? So if he, if they can get him by the end of the season, if they can get him within ten seconds of end of race time between him and the leader, you know, it's time then that you get an alien and put an alien on that bike. Do you know what I mean? No. Saying that, what alien in their right mind? Who's going to be the guinea pig? Would go there? No one. Well, like you would, and this. Who is who is the alien? Of money on that table. Yeah, they might. I think Jorge Martin in two years' time could go there. I'd say it now. If they're competitive. If, oh, they're fight, if, if, if they're fight, 
<laughs> if they're five or ten seconds off, right, they, he'll have a leash in there who will be giving them the feedback. Oh man. If they can get that up, he's, he's setting them up. If they can get the understanding done for the 27, I, I don't see why not. Hmm. But don't you go out on the premise that, that uh, a pro is always going to have be stuck in that law? Well, they are for the next two years because unless they bring out a fucking absolute banger of an engine next year. I don't know. Like it's great to go, it's great to go around the corner fast, but there's a lot of fucking acceleration zones, yeah, you know, that that a pretty just cannot keep up with. So, like, fuck's sake, he pretty got out, out fucking done by the Yamaha down the street there recently. That should never happen, by the way, just in case someone they're not showing um improvements. It seems I like forgot, yeah, I forgot why the hell they they uh they they uh they they uh. Approve that the the uh, engine freeze is beyond me. It made no sense. Other mm -hmm. than it made oh, well, oh, money oh, sense, I guess it's financial oh, sense. That's uh, it's financial sense. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I mean, why would they want to keep improve? I mean, I can see for Ducati, they're so they're so far ahead. It's like, how much improvement do you need to do? Um, Unless they figure they could squeeze the improvements in by the time it's their, you know, by by the by uh, next year. Mm. If it was you know, me, I was I would I would wait and, and put everything into the twenty seven. Um, you know I'm saying they might have something for twenty six sitting there if they can get it in, uh, the homologized, you know, homologation, 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 but. Yeah, yeah, you got to fight concessions. Packed in in that short period of time, it might work. So, look for me where 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 I'm going with this, right? Is that if Han if Honda can improve and the leash gives the nod, right, and says, yeah, it's it's improving, it's getting there, and it's and if they can get it within five or ten seconds consistently of a race leader, Martin would be very confident in his abilities then to say, I can make that difference over a race different distance, like realistically. If they're within 10 seconds of Peko as with a normal rider, just say, or, or Mark, right? That's maybe nine seconds at the end of the race. That's probably the three or four tenths of a second a lap that the alien brings. Mm -hmm. So, but it's they really need that they need to have two or th they need to at least have two of those riders on that Honda at that 10, nine, 10 seconds back at the end of the race. But, and I'll hear me out in this, right? If their bike is somewhat there, right? And you're going into 2027's regulations. Would it be a good idea to be in a team like Honda and Yamaha that everyone will have the same amount of open concessions, right? For the first six months of the year would it be the right thing that you're going to be within a team that has a bucket of money that can throw at it to fix any problems? If you, for example, go to Aprilia and they've gone yeah. the wrong direction, well, they, well, they're not short of money, don't, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to steer the ship. They're not going to just like fuck things at it to try and get it to, to, to work. They're probably going to be six, eight, twelve. By the way, when you said they, everybody has the the same concessions for six months of the year, it doesn't change between the manufacturers at all, does it? That would does it? Seven. Yep, does. Yep, everyone will go to class D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone goes to class D. They don't yeah. have anybody going to class C or A, right? No, no, no. Everyone, across the board, everybody's getting the same. I'm from asking. from the first six months of the year, everyone will be in class D. So nobody's getting any advantage from 2027 for the first six months. And what about after the first six months? They probably then would start moving. Like, let's just say if two manufacturers or one manufacturer is running away with it, they would move them up into say C or B. That's ridiculous. But, uh, but we've seen even with Honda having the, well, that, happens, that happens every year, Jake, that's supposed to happen every six months. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of this race season, they're still, they're going to look at people's. So, for example, KTM could have had a worse season. They've scored less percentage points than they did last year, and they're within the. They could move down. 
they could go to class C or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? No, class, no they're, they're in class C. They could technically, if they score less than 36% of the, the oh, I can't remember. But mm-hmm. technically, yeah. Yeah, but Jorge, he, he, I wouldn't move anywhere until you see real results, like you're saying, like until Luca Marini. But, but um, you see, yeah, like mm-hmm. I think, I think there's going to be a big trust. I would say that right until, I would say that fine. Yes, the fact that Alicia Spagro is in there, that's a that's a different story for me than with, with um with this because what Alish was in Martin's ear all this year about going to Aprilia. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if he gets there and like we all now know that like if if Martin gets there and there's no horsepower in the engine, that's what's going to be blamed as the engine freeze, right? That's what it is. And then he's going to say, oh yeah, we're over here at Honda. Now it's, it's doing really well. This is what's coming. That's what's coming. The other thing. Like, Yes, they have professional courtesy of that they're not going to be thing. But if you're trying to get a fella to come over into the team, you're going to be leaking a little bit of information saying, look, this is coming down the road. That's coming down the road. Of course. The other, do you know what I mean? And I think that's going to be a big thing for, like, and all I'm, all I'm saying is that, like, I can see it happening. I can see, um, the again, the major factor being uh, Alicia Spagro. And then also... Like, do you want to be in a team like Aprilia if something does go wrong? Do you know what I mean? If they go the wrong direction, how long is their turnaround time going to be? If Honda is somewhat competitive, not not saying massively competitive, but if it's somewhat competitive, you know, a midway through 2026, because lads, that's when things for 27 are going to be wrapped up, right? Midway through 2026. Who is not to say that you know Honda are on a right? They're on an upward tra- trajectory, and they'll have the budget if something does go wrong to get it fixed quickly, hopefully for them. But look, that could be hearsay. Um, I but I, I can see it happening. Uh, Japan this weekend. Fuck it, lads. This is a, this is a fucking pain in the ass one now for me. This is a great one for you, I think, isn't it? No, not for me. My Jake. You're five hours, aren't you? Uh well no, we're always the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, yeah, we're, we're always the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was a weird one. Indonesia was weird because it was like, like three. Sucked. You know what? The, the 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 computer was off for the sprint race and this it said it had some weird what's what's twenty two it had it said it was at ten o'clock in at uh, night. On Saturday, yeah. I was like, "No, it's not. It was off." I luckily turned the TV on and saw it at three a.m. It's three a.m. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, but it wasn't so, yeah. three a.m. on the on the on the. Yeah. Screen. So this this one is actually so it's seven to eight seven a.m. to eight a.m. on Friday is the final free practice for me, um, which is grand. I get that done before I go to work, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then race is seven to eight. Our sprint race is seven to eight a.m. Well, it's a bit of a shit one for you. And then the the main race is six a.m. So that's a handy one. That's one a.m. for you. Do you know what I mean? It's not bad. You can watch the race and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is if you don't if the, if the TV's off, right? You don't the, the timing's off on the on the site. Mm-hmm. You don't know what the time is, right? So now you got to stay up to, to see what's, what's actually on. You got to keep coming back to the site all night. I give you your your, your um your. I. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I give you your your ten minute countdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, notification. Your ten minute notification that it, that it's got to start. Um, yeah, Japan. Hopefully, the weather will be somewhat good. Um. It's always weird in Japan. It's, it can, yeah, it always tends to be a little bit out there as well. Um, well, if Cody goes well next year, right, I would, I wouldn't mind going to uh, the Japan for a race. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a long way. It's a long way to go. See if, <laughs> for, 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 <laughs> huh? See if we can live through it. <laughs> Dodge yeah. all the bullets. 
Dodge all the bullet. Oh yeah, fuck oh, it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be dangerous. Minute, yeah, the minute I walk into Japan, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say about Honda? Right. And Yamaha. Yeah. So uh, I know it's um, yeah. Kota will be will be interesting. But anyway, who is gonna be your fast man on Friday, lads? Are you? No, yeah. Let's go for. Um, let's go for sprint race winner rather than anything else. Uh, I think Martin's on a roll. I think he's 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 getting he has the momentum and he's going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Yeah, I'm the same. I hate I hate to to you know be the same. Take you know let's choose the same people, but yeah, I, I think, think I'm with Mark Martin. He's taking him by a hair, don't you? Yeah, I think he has it in the bag. He just can't fumble it. Don't fumble it, you know. Fumble it. Yeah, I still think, I don't know, I still think there's another couple of twists. I I don't think this is anywhere, anywhere over. And as I mentioned, I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be a clash. Um, and I think it's going to be like some sort of, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think everything is still too cordial at the moment at the top of the championship. Um and you know, um, I could be wrong, um, but I just think it is maybe something that we, um, that we need. It needs to happen. Yeah, I think as long as he stays on the bike, he has it in the bag. If I, I wish. If I was his trainer or coach, I say just don't fall. Whatever you do, do not yeah. fall. But that's, that's but that's it. but that's that's the fucking problem. Like it's so easy for us to sit here and say, stay on the bike and don't fall. Mm-hmm. It's the first thing that's gonna fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, it's hard uh, to fall falling down in this when you ride a mistake because we all know it's not something you do on purpose it's not something it's just you're, you're but, pushing pushing the edge and it just you go over you know but i think i i think I, what else I think, do you call it though you know it's just kind of well what's the difference between an alien and a an average rider is two or three tenths of a second that's what we're talking about lads, right but to go to be able to go to that two or three tenths of a second is going to also bring mistakes do you know what i mean and you know the the smart guys here, um, also Bastanini and Marquez had their issues today. Was was them because there's no pressure on them. Mm-hmm. Joe would have been to go out and win the championship. They could just fucking go attack it, have no absolutely nothing to lose. And you know, I, now okay, it's a bit hard, but saying that. They they're still now in that same predicament. They have absolutely zero to lose. What's the worst that could happen? Well, they probably won't go any lower in the championship. It's a it's only a one way system. So I don't yeah. know. I just think that's that that's just my two cents. For me, um I don't know, I think I I I think Peco's I think this track is, is peg. I think it'll be a good battle between himself and Martin, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is where the tension starts to grow. Um, I think they're going to be very close, and I think it's going to be um, something there. But for me, I think it's going to be Peko this weekend in Japan. I think just to be different as well too. I think I think Peko's your guy. Uh, no, I actually like Baseki more than if I was to pick a favorite writer, it's it's Baseki would be would be yeah. I, uh, I thought it would be a Costa for for, for Mac. Like, you see yeah. that well, that's what I'm. I'm sorry, that's what I meant. I meant I meant a uh, Costa Pedro. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised I, you didn't I, I, Pedro. Yeah. Well, he is. He is. I'm telling you what. I don't. The, the reason I didn't go Pedro and I can. The reason I didn't the reason I didn't go Pedro is because of that downhill right hand corner under the bridge. Mm-hmm. I I think Pedro is gonna wash out there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's wow. uh, that you know, and if anyone remembers his last 
downhill right hand, 90 degree right hand corner. Does anyone? Mm -mm. Go look at it in YouTube and, and watch his uh, 300 kilometer an hour crash in uh, Austria. Austria. His big crash. Yeah, downhill. It took yeah. On the brakes, right, 90 degree right hand corner. Yeah. Um, but I think, I, I think Pecco this week. Higher, though, Pedro, yeah. Pedro and Basecki are my favorite two two riders, if 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 I'm honest, out there. Those would be the ones that I at the start of a weekend that I would really be wishing to have um to have a really good race. I do like Fabio Quadrero as well. I like Fabio. Um, mm -hmm. But like I just I I like I really like the character of the two lads that, that are there. Pedro doesn't couldn't give a fuck about getting laid. Just wants to ride his bike. <laughs> Joe, yeah. Levine, Fabio, or uh, what's his name, Marco oh. Obasecki, oh. just wants. To, I I think I actually think like he is a really really good personality, but he also reminds me an awful lot of one of my favorite riders ever. Yeah, I like Martin because he likes to get laid twenty four seven. It's a man. <laughs> <laughs> He's engaged to be married. He's fucking done, man. Um, yeah, when so, engaged being done, no, in, in Spain, it does, it takes your fucking house to them all. Um, yeah, but yeah, Marco Bosecchi reminds me an awful lot of uh, Marco Simoncelli. I was gonna say that, yeah, he looks, he looks That's, like the and he is one of my favorite, favorite writers ever mm -hmm. because. I see an awful lot of Pedro Casta in him now as well. Jody, he just doesn't give a fuck. Jody, mm -hmm. he just didn't give a fucking rat's ass who you were. He was going to have a go, and that was it. And that's the kind of writer I I, 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 I do I do enjoy. Um, anyway, on that bombshell, lads, we'll wrap it up there for today. Uh, I, I need to go do do stuff. I'm only just back in from watching Wolves Liverpool in the Premiership ah yeah so anyway we'll leave it there for this week lads uh, we will see you again uh, after Japan and uh, we'll be chatting ourselves during the week anyway thank you again to everyone for joining and we will see you all real soon